Depth of field, or depth of focus as some people call it, is the zone of acceptable sharpness within our image. In many images, but not all, there will be an area in front of our subject and behind it that will not be in focus. Now I think we probably need an image on screen to help us here. And in this viewfinder view of our subject, all of the exposure settings are correct for this image. Four hundredths of a second at f5.6 using 400 ISO. But we also need to know the focal length of the lens used. And here, as you can see at the top of the screen, it was a 400 millimeter telephoto zoom. The reason we need to know the focal length of the lens is that there are three things that affect depth of field. There's the aperture or the f-stop we've selected. There's the focal length of the lens we've used for the shot. And also the distance we are from subject to camera. Now when we talk about a zone of focus within our image, we can clearly see that zone here with my ring-tailed lemur. I focused about where you can see the center focus point in the viewfinder here. The aperture here is as wide as this lens goes, but the depth of field is fairly shallow. We have the lemur and the rock sharp because they're on the same plane of focus as the animal's eyes. They're within our depth of field. But when we look a little more closely, perhaps at the lemur's tail, we can see that becoming a little softer towards the end because it's further away from us and therefore it's outside our depth of field or our depth of focus. So depth of field, whether we've got a wide depth of field or a shallow depth of field, can be a positive thing or a negative thing, it depends on the image we're shooting. Here, it's a positive thing, especially when you look at the background. That is way outside any zone of focus, but that's what we wanted here. It makes the animal bold and appealing. Here's another example, and you'll notice a little tripod icon I've included down by the shutter speed to tell you this image was shot from a tripod. That allows me to use a shutter speed that would be far too slow to hand hold at half a second. But having the camera on a tripod allowed me to select f11 to make sure the lamp was completely sharp and well within my depth of focus or depth of field. At the centre top you can see that a 105mm lens was used, that would be a 28 to 135 zoom, but to capture the shot I must have chosen 105mm to get into the frame exactly what I wanted. But the settings I've used has allowed the background, which is outside my depth of field, to soften but we can still make out what the background is, which again is working in our favour. Now look at the depth of field in this shot. It ranges from a few inches in front of us to infinity. Now that's been achievable because all three things that affect depth of field are in play here. The focal length of the lens used was 15mm and wide angle lenses always seem to help us to create a greater depth of field. The aperture we used was f11 and coupled with a wide angle lens that gives us this very wide depth of field. The distance from the subject to the camera was just about right to maximise that depth of field. With this particular shot, you can see I've actually shot the lily from the top down. But imagine shooting this from edge on, from the side, on about the same level as the lily. 
I'll also add our lens here to show the aperture, which here is wide open on this lens at f5.6. The lens used again was a 28 to 135 millimeter zoom. So if we focus on the center of the flower, the zone that will be in focus may be something like this. Remembering we're shooting from the edge on from the left. And of course, if we reduce the aperture to f8, then that will increase the zone of focus, the depth of field, just a little wider. At f11, our aperture is much smaller and depth of field increases even more. If we skip f16, which is the next logical aperture here, and go straight to f22, or even f32 if we have it, we may find all of our flower shot from edge on is now within our depth of field. But here, I may bring my focus point back just a little bit to around a third into my subject. Now I've split my depth of field videos into two here. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to go straight on to part two and take a look at that.